All right, so Sigun Kwok says that he can teach you how to cheese out in five minutes. I'm gonna do my best to at least give you the instructions in about five minutes. Um, you know me, I talk too much. So number one that we have to look at is our basic hand, uh, hand positioning. So uh, the rolling position that you see in cheese house called Pung Sa just means rolling hands. So look, even if you don't do Wing Chun, this should help you get rolling with it. Um, when you're doing this, you're gonna see people basically doing something like this. It's not even, although eventually it will be. Uh, but for the most part, you're looking at Tan Sao, Bong Sao, and Fuk Sao. So Tan Sao, if you're going with your right-handed position, Tan Sao, elbow should be roughly on the shoulder line, wrist bone should be roughly on the center line. When you roll up to Bong Sao, that wrist basically stays in position and the elbow stays on the line. All you're doing is really rotating the wrist and elevating there, right? So that's that. The Fuk Sao, just because the hands can't occupy the same space, the Fuk Sao is gonna raise and lower just a little bit. When you're in the upper position, you're gonna roll your fingers towards their face. When you're in the lower position, you're gonna roll your fingers sideways. That will matter later, just go along with it for the moment. So to start off, we're gonna go one hand at a time. So if I'm in the Tan Sao position, Mike here's gonna be in the Fuk Sao position. You're gonna notice that as I roll, he's just gonna ride the hand. So as I roll, we're just here. If you're dealing with somebody who is shorter than you or taller than you, whatever, always roll towards the shorter person so that you're not making them <laughs> roll up at their nose. Uh, that's just wearing on the shoulders. This is a good place to start. Just getting that roll in. And then we can reverse the position. So we go to the other hand. Now he's gonna be in Tan Sao, I'm gonna be in Fuk Sao. Then he starts rolling and all I do is ride it. Now, the other thing here that we need to make sure of is that we're not putting in a ton of pressure. Yes, there's hard chi sao, there's pulsing chi sao like the Wang Shun Lung guys do. They're all valuable to some sort, but you know, being in the Samuel Kwok, Ip Ching, Ip Chung lineage, we tend to be pretty soft. So we, we don't want a lot of pressure here. We shouldn't be carrying each other's arms, at least not just yet. So this is our basic kind of one-handed position. So. Now, if we reset and we bring ourselves in, you'll notice that my Tan Sao is always versus his Bong Sao. Our wrists should be more or less stacked over each other and our hands are basically gonna be about the, you know, the, the spacing of like a softball or so. And as we roll, we're literally just kind of tripping around our own hands. It is a very small, very small arc. One of the big problems that I see with a lot of people, especially Jeet Kune Do people, so if you're a Jeet Kune Do guy, pay attention to this. You're not steering a pirate ship. You don't do Chi Sao like this. Chi Sao is tight. Now, tight, not pressure-wise, tight size-wise, right? Now, you should be present, you should be forward, but you shouldn't be pushing, right? If I'm sitting here pushing, I'm giving him a lot of energy, a lot of information. If I am, you know, hang back and just being soft, anytime he decides to strike, there's just nothing, go ahead and, yeah, there's just nothing there. So you want somewhere in the middle where you're just being present. Now, right now, look, I'm holding my, my Yiji Kimi and Ma stance, but don't worry about that. You can just kind of stand naturally shoulder width. Try to stay relaxed, keep your shoulders down. Don't roll up here <laughs> like this, all right? So this is just the basic position. Now, from here, you're gonna to wanna to start learning how to transition around to your different positions because you can go to a left-handed position or something in between. So, if we go back to one hand, I'm gonna use my Hien Sao, Hien Sao, circling hand, and all I'm doing is circling around and coming around the top. It's gonna to take some practice, so I recommend you go one hand at a time, circle and come around on top. When I do that, if I give him a little pressure, he rolls up to Bang Sao, and then he rolls back down to Tan, and then he can circle around, boom, and then I come down, and then I come around, right? And then you can just kind of keep going like that. Same thing on the other hand, all right? Uh, if he's on the bottom, you can go ahead and circle. I roll up the bong, I Tan, I circle, right? And then you can just keep on rolling like that. Now, nothing says you have to go to Bong Sao, you know, nothing says you have to do this. A lot of people will hewn palm up to get a little toxal action in to get a press. That has its limitations. It is useful, but it, it's limited. 
Uh, so I like the traditional hewn sound. So as we're doing this, you know, I can, you know, from the top side, I can do this and kind of just keep my elbow down the whole time. I can bring in the other hand, right? So I can be in double long sow, which I said earlier that you're not going to do, but yeah, you'll do it once in a while, right? But we could just start constantly rolling and I can keep my hands down. I don't ever have to go to bong sow if I don't feel like it. So if my shoulders are tired, I can let them rest. But if I want to get that extra practice in, every time I feel him come around the outside, I can roll that bong out, and that's going to be useful every once in a while. So just get used to this. We call this running hands. Uh, I forget the Chinese for it off the top of my head, but Ip Chen was a fan of doing this, right? Just getting used to keeping the circle. And again, keeping this somewhat reasonably, you know, tight is, is useful. You know, you don't want to start letting it roll way out here. Keep it tight right around the center, best you can. T-Rex arms, right? Now, from here, just kind of find a stopping point, get back to your right-handed position. Once you get used to that, the next thing, and this is where Seagun Kwok goes with this, is he just teaches you the basic lop chop, you know, kind of, of pattern. So from my bong style, I bring this up, and I roll and this kind of pushes him across the line. My other hand sneaks up right behind it, clears the hand. Now, if you want to grab and pull, you can for the time being, just kind of clear it. And then this hand is just going to do a little hewn sow and come through. And all he does is bring his hand up and stop it. And then we can just reset and go. And then he can do it to me. Boom, kind of block. So you're going to call says, just say hi, <laughs> you know. Super easy, and then you can just reset, right? And then you can practice it, start playing a little bit of running hands, and every once in a while you find that bong sow. Yeah, see, intercepted a little differently. Boom. And then you just find that point and reset, right? I'll take my running hands, and every once in a while I find the bong sow, sneak it in, and we're right there. Now this is just your start, but that's a good starting point for getting into Chisao. You don't need to be a Wing Chun guy. You don't need to be a Jeet Kune Do guy. You can use your skill. The big key points are keep it small. Don't be too heavy. Don't be too, you know, not too much pressure. Uh, don't give away too much. You gotta be sneaky. Practice this and then start seeing what else you can do. All right, we're gonna end the video here and we'll probably address more Chisao later on and I'll talk to you guys later. Good journey. <laughs>